got But you served on the floor, didn't you? Oh, yeah. John yeah. Bacon. Do you remember how long it was? Sports information. All right, good evening. I call this meeting to order. It's the regular council meeting of October 23rd, 2017. The time is 7.30. Can we have roll call? Mayor Pro Tem Bliss. Here. Councilman Clark. Councilman Clark. Present. Councilman Corbett. Here. Councilman Gettings. Here. Councilwoman Scott. Here. Councilman Soltis. Here. And Mayor Hartwell. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Uh, would you please rise if you're able for an invocation to be led by Councilman Richard Clark and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance? Heavenly Father, let us look to you for help in identifying the problems we can rectify in our community and guide us in our efforts to administer aid to those in need. Help us to use our time and energy wisely, not to waste it on insignificant matters that benefit no one. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda tonight? Okay, we'll go to the substantive portion of our agenda. Uh, item A1 is a public hearing for Ordinance 2122, which is the new uh, downtown development plan. Uh, Mr. Myers, I believe staff has a presentation before I open the public hearing. Uh, yes, Your Honor, I'll give uh, some brief comments and then we'll have a staff presentation. In June of 1997, City Council created the uh, Madison Heights Downtown Development Authority and as a result, the DDA adopted the Tax Increment Financing and Development Plan to establish the legal basis and procedure for the capture and expenditure of tax increment revenues. Uh, the duration of the plan was set at 20 years, commencing upon adoption by council, and it's due to expire uh, with tax collections this December, end of December. Accordingly, last year, council adopted a goal to review and update the tax increment financing and development plan to guide the continued development of the downtown development district. On September 12th, the DDA Board of Directors unanimously approved an updated DDA tax increment financing and development plan for council's consideration. So presented for council's consideration is a copy of the amended, uh, is the amended ordinance approving and adopting a new tax increment financing and development plan. Following the required public hearing, staff, the DDA, and I recommend the council adopt the ordinance on first reading, and if approved, the ordinance will be scheduled for second reading at the regular council meeting of November 13th. Uh, the ordinance will take effect 10 days after its adoption and upon publication. And uh, Mayor Council, our Economic and uh, Community Engagement Supervisor, Linda Williams, has a short overview uh, to give Council and the public. Good evening. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right, the, one of the most common questions I get from our citizens are, what is the DDA? What does the TIF stand for? And how does the TIF DDA get their funding? And lastly, what are the boundaries of the DDA district? So that would be appropriate to start off with this first slide on some fast facts about our DDA. On March, as been stated, on March 10, 1998, the Downtown Development Authority adopted a tax increment financing and development plan. This plan established the legal basis and procedures for the capture and expenditure of tax increment revenue that is used to finance recommended public improvements within the DDA. Uh, it is consists of 13 board members who are, a lot of them are here present for this today's meeting. And it is also a relatively small DDA with just under 200 parcels and approximately 104 acres. The duration of the DDA's TIF plan is 20 years, and it will terminate with tax collection due in December of this year. So accordingly, last year, City Council adopted a goal to review and update this tax increment financing and development plan to guide the continued development of the downtown development district. As stated, the other common question I get from our businesses is what are the boundaries of the DDA district? So I'm gonna just hopefully you see my, is there a mouse pointer right here? 
So the northern portion of our DDA district starts at Gardenia and John R. Okay. And then it, cross, it goes all the way down, all the way down to 10 Mile and John R. It picks up the last two parcels with the bowling alley and then auto repa repair shop at the 10 Mile and John R. corner. And it goes from the service drive on 11 Mile over here, all the way to the other end of Lorenz just before the high school. So that, that, I call it the small little cross of our DDA uh, boundary, or DDA district. So a little bit about some of these projects that the DDA has provided funding over the years. And I'm not gonna go through all of them, but certainly I wanna highlight some of the bigger projects. Like the clock tower construction, of course that was the first major project the DDA take, taken on. It's the major clock tower that you see at the 11 mile and John R intersection, very well known. Um, we've done, we started off with some monthly you know, workshops and it kind of morphed into um, some of the larger DDA special events like the annual art challenge that's coming up actually in November. And for quite a number of years we did the taste festival as well. And then we do a quite a number of maintenance and beautification uh, projects, like the uh, we currently still do um, the right the right of uh, right away grass cutting and mowing and the weekly trash pickup. And then we've done some other significant road projects, like the whole alley um, improvement projects on the north side of 11 Mile. And then probably one of the most large or the largest project uh, as far as you know budget numbers go uh, was the permanent address plaque sign that's one of our largest unifying element that you see in our dda district and that's that big every uh, DDA parcel or business received that seven inch address plaque in the dda at no additional cost to our dda business owners All right, how is the DDA funded? Again, that's another common question that we get from our residents. In order to finance the public improvements outlined in the development plan, the DDA has utilized the use of tax increment financing, which is the ability to capture the incremental increase in property taxes that results from improvements in the DDA district. So I'm gonna put a little illustration that I used for my DDA board. So if you can imagine, this is our DDA. Once the DDA district and the TIF plan is approved, the property values covered by that plan are essentially frozen. Okay. Future tax revenues attributed to any increase in value above that base value are then captured by the DDA authority in order to implement the projects outlined in the TIF and development plan. Now, TIF funds are then captured and spent only within the DDA district. Now, TIF is not an additional tax or a new tax. It is redirecting a portion of that tax revenue already being collected. And that's where you see in this captured in this last slide here. Again, the premise behind TIF is fairly simple. It allows the authority to direct funds to engage in specific economic development activities without raising local property taxes. The value of the increment, the additional tax rates created by new or increased development saw this tremendous decline during the recession. And my next two slides um, helps to demonstrate that. I know it's a little bit small on the screen here, and I do have copies of both the PowerPoint presentation and copies of the uh, draft plan too as well. So if anyone who wants to come and pick that up afterward, I'd be more than happy to um, pass it out. All right, this DDA tax revenue forecast sheet best summarizes how these factors have impacted the DDA revenue. The forecast sheet provides a very conservative forecast of projected revenues based on a projected growth for the next 20 years. As you can see, the annual revenues are only estimated to increase from $58,000 in year one to just over 65,000 in year 20. 
In addition, since the passage of Proposal A, the state equalized value, or the SEV, has historically been higher than the taxable value of a property. However, with the wave of the housing crisis and the economic recession experienced in the last decade, the market value plummeted. The other major factor that has contributed to the steep decline in the capture is losses due to property tax appeals. The good news is that the Madison Heights DDA has no debt or loan obligations like you see in some of the other uh, DDAs, are, that are their DDAs are experiencing. And lastly, Madison Heights is 98% built out, which further limits the amount of new tax base and the tax increment to add to the TIF revenue. Again, funding for the DDA is derived exclusively from the incremental growth in real property taxes above the base rate year for those properties located in the DDA district. This chart shows how the revenues have decreased nearly 75% over the last decade from $243,100 in fiscal year 2009 to 10, that's the peak that, right on the top of that chart there, to just above $50,000 for fiscal year 2018. Now, given the steep decline over the span of eight years and the projected trend over the next 20 years, the DDA worked hard to prioritize the projects identified in the revised plan within the budgetary constraints. So I, what about the DDA plan? So I'm gonna, the DDA board at the September 12th board meeting approved a draft of the amended TIF and development plan for council's final adoption. The amended plan is broken down into four main categories in ranking order on this chart. I'm gonna go again, just highlight some of the bigger projects in, every one, in each category. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but I'm gonna highlight some of the ones that rank pretty high. Um, no surprise there on the marketing and branding, some of the streetscape improvements and permanent ID elements. The example I showed you, the ones we've done in the past are those big address plaque signs where every DDA business owner or uh, building received one. 11 Ma and John R. Center was no surprise, uh, ranked high. They're also looking for some you know, unifying elements or marketing elements that we could apply to that key corner of our DDA. Um, some of the smaller projects that we're already doing, like the bike rack program, they would like to see a continuation of that. We just had it uh, two weeks ago, had our bike rack unveiling, and we're gonna have two brand new ones, one on John R. and one on 11 Mile coming up actually next week. Um, on the beautification effort, um, the most, it is, again, it's not, it was not a surprise that it ranked number one. Facade improvement program, um, we started this about seven years ago, one of the most successful um, um, grant program, one of two grant programs, um, where we, uh, from a 50 to private to public matching up to 50%, and at one point up to $5,000, assisting property owners to beautify or make improvements to their physical um, uh, building. Um, this one ranked really, really high as well, um, planting trees in the, in the right of way. That was a new idea that was proposed. I believe that was generated through the town hall meetings as well. Um, proactive code enforcement, no surprise. They wanted to see um, that uh, rubbed up. Um, acquisition and demolition of DDA parcel. We actually had that back in the day when first came in, um, the first DDA started. We started banking some um, uh, line on them in our DDA budget. Um, and then of course on the maintenance uh, side, again, um, the right of way grass cutting, it, it's something we continue to do to, to today. Um, they still ranked high, that was very, very, very important from our DDA board and from our stakeholders. Um, of course the clock tower still needs, uh, even though it's built, we still need to maintain it. Uh, we also do weekly trash pickup, so trash receptacles was, um, and other right-of-way improvements was still on there and important. 
Um, events um, actually is actually our largest list. Um, we have many, many um, fun and um, many things that were suggested at the town hall meeting and um, I, some of them we already do, so they, a lot of the board members and stakeholders said we need to continue that. But like I said, we had some um, new ideas um, proposed and r number one that was ranked, or the one that was ranked number one was the farmer's market. Um, an art challenge, like I said, it's coming up in November. We do that every year. Um, it's going on our ninth year, and we're having a great start. In fact, our reception is planned for um, November, late late November. I'm glad that it, it did continue to rank high. And a couple other fun things, like I said, the food truck rally, um, having a, uh, an open house at the fire station number two, and then some um, brand new ideas like the joint homecoming, homecoming event and even a DDA scavenger hunt. And that's really it for just a quick, like I said, it was a very quick summary. I want to thank my course, our mayor and city council, and our DDA board, um, and our stakeholders, our citizens, our business owners. And I see some of our DDA um, business owners here tonight. Um, they worked very hard. It was uh, about a year-long process that we went through this. So thank you for the opportunity to, if you have any questions, be happy to answer them. All right, thank you. At this time, uh, I'll open the public hearing. If anyone from the public would like to address City Council on this uh, downtown development plan, now is the opportunity to do so. Good evening, Ms. Moore. Hello, I'm Gloria Moore, 27368 Dartmouth. Um, I was wondering how many residents were on the board and how, how many business people? Also is on the second reading, uh, will people have the opportunity to voice their opinions then? Okay, there's, uh, uh, your first question, there are 13 members on the board. There's 13 board members on the DDA board and majority have to have property interest in the DDA. Okay, and they're fellow business owners. They're all business owners. Some we have a resident on there and some um, out of district um, um, board members, but in, by statutory um, right, they have to, you have to have majority having property interest in the DDA. And then yes, there will be comments uh, the second reading as well. Would anyone else like to uh, address city council? It's, it's a public hearing on the downtown development plan. Good evening. Good evening, I'm Rosalind Grafstein. I'm going to try and get a clarification on Mrs. Moore's question. So in order to be a board member, you need to own a business in the DDA, is that correct? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, the, all of our board members, DDA board members are appointed by mayor and council, okay? And they have to have, major, majority must have property interests in the DDA district. So many of them ha are property owners or business owners, or they work for the company or business. Okay, um, are there any residents, are there any Madison Heights residents on the current board? Uh, myself, Brian Hartwell, I'm on the board. I'm a resident of Madison Heights. Okay. Um, does someone from council have to be on the board? I believe the mayor, uh, by the city ordinance, is mm -hmm. designated as a member of the board. Okay, um, and then my question, um, I just want to follow up on Mrs. Moore's and get uh, some clarification there. My question is the the area uh, that you've described, Are there is that all commercial or business property, or are there residential um, school parks, other other types of property in there? Yeah, it's mostly commercial, I would say almost 95% of it, however, there's a chunk in the middle that is school. You can think Wilkinson Middle School. There are very few uh, multifamily housing in the district. Um, I mean, there, there's some apartments on 11 Mile. I don't know if we have the colored uh, use map. Um, and then pretty much most of the properties south of Lincoln are industrial. Okay, so but you know, mostly everything north of um, Lincoln is commercial with the few exceptions, uh, Wilkinson and some multifamily. So there's there's one school and a smattering of, uh, 
of apartments. Yeah, and there's a municipal building as well, the fire fire station. Fire station. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. Public hearing still open on the downtown development plan. Any other comments or questions from the public? All right, no one's asked to be recognized. Um, what's, I'll, I'll close the public hearing. What's the wish of city council? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Corbett. Sir, I move that on first reading, I wanna make sure I do this correctly. The council approves the uh, recommended, approves the amended and restated downtown development authority tax increment financing and development plan on first reading. Your Honor, just to clarify, that's ordinance 2122. Yes, thank you. Try it. And okay. schedule the next meeting. I like that too. All right. Is there a second for the motion? Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Scott. Second. Thank you. Councilman, I'll, I'll restate the motion. Councilman Corbett, um, let's see. Move to adopt ordinance 2122 on first reading and schedule the next uh, meeting for second reading, uh, November 13th, 2017. Ordinance 2122 is the amended and restated downtown development authority TIF and development plan. What's the, What's, what does city council say about this? Any discussion? Mr. Well, Mayor. Okay, Mrs. Scott. Um, i um, been here long enough um, to see great changes, very positive changes in that section of Madison Heights. Um, I do remember one of the first things, improvement, that I remember was back in the 70s when Ernie Fisher decided to get rid of diagonal parking. Everybody parked diagonally on the street in front of the businesses, thereby creating uh, you know very narrow roads and people driving in and out to park. Um, I do remember it used to be like that back in the 50s, and some of you may remember that. But I do remember the one of the things that Ernie Fisher did, our former city manager, was to put berms on there with grass. And that was uh, the first I remember of any beautification in that area, which I think was a really plus, a real plus to our uh, economic development there. But I, I think it's so beneficial to have this economic development and I, I know that council is gonna support it for many, many years. We get so many benefits from it. It's just incredible. And with Linda Williams at the helm doing this, um, we can't go wrong. <laughs> You know, I do want to recognize the the members of the the downtown development authority board who've you know some have been here all 20 years um, and others have just been here for a year you know giving us some new energy some new ideas our, our chairman's birthday is today <laughs> the honorable Mike Van Buren our vice chairs Miss Nini uh, then you know this board it, it's one of the more uh, busier boards in our city they meet a lot their meetings are long and not only do they have meetings at City Hall, but, but they're out in the community. So you'll remember the joint town hall we did last summer at Wilkinson Middle School. That was the downtown board's idea. Um, and that from that town hall where we had 70 residents and business owners, stakeholders uh, come and uh, roll up their sleeves, uh, the ideas from that town hall that our board hosted is really what formed the basis of the four categories for the, the new and revised downtown. Um, so I, my hat is off to the downtown board. I'll, you know, I'll name some of the others, the other board members, Ricky Bustler, Ruth Charlevoix, Charlevoix, Joe Jarbo, Johnny John, Dan Johnson, Joe Keys, Ben Myers, Mike Shepard, Marlene Spritzer, and Carrie Valmassi. Um, it, th this is... This is a great board that the city has. Um, it's, it's exciting what the potential is for the next 20 years. And these goals will be measurable. Um, some of them are very short-term goals, like can we hold a successful art challenge? Can we uh, recruit enough food trucks? You know, those things are measurable. But over the course of the 20 years, the long-term goal is whether we have improved property values and increased development in this district. And I think this board, you know, as business owners, as property owners, have you know, an immediate interest in improving this district. I mean, it's, it's their neck on the line. They got skin in the game. Um, so thank you to the board. Thank you to Linda Williams and Jim Schaefer and uh, uh, Ben Myers and Drew, one of our newest employees. 
Um, and also to the DPS, I, <laughs> we've been testing out some signs uh, this summer and this fall. Maybe you saw those, uh, uh, what are they? The little toppers on the top of all the street signs, the wayfinding signs. Um, these things are works in progress. Uh, sometimes we're learning as, the go, as we go, um, but most of the time we won't. This 20 year plan is so well vetted. And so I encourage city council to vote yes tonight and then yes on second reading. Um, but it's up to city council now and it's up to city council really every year for the whole 20 years. If city council wants to change some of the priorities of spending, that can be done year to year to year. But this is a great place to start. Um, a great reason to be proud of Madison Heights, an easy way for us to market ourselves in the region and to attract new business and development. Any other discussion from council? Uh, Your Honor. Mr. Bliss? Uh, you had mentioned spending priorities, and, and I know Ms. Williams was mentioning the scoring and the ranking system. Uh, could we just get some clarification for that for, for the audience as to who scored? What was that at the town hall? Was that the board after the town hall? Uh, just to kind of inform how those rankings took place. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, like I said, it was a year-long process, over a year-long process. We really kicked it off with that joint um, DDA and City Council town hall meeting. So out of that town hall meeting, many, many, many ideas were generated from that meeting. Um, Obviously, with the budget constraints, we can't do them all. So we had the tedious task. Not not only we asked our stakeholders that participated in the in the town hall meeting. We had every bit of 70 plus um, board members and citizens, business community leaders, school members, representatives come and join us. So we had a broad spectrum of ideas generated, and we had to wind that down. And and the board members themselves um, had to go through that list and prioritize, you know, within the budget constraints that we knew with the, you know, projected TIF for never news um, that we had in front of us. And that's, all of those ideas were put into those four main categories. I'll go to that slide here. Oh. So, all of those ideas, um, big and small, medium, um, seem to fit within these four main categories. Um, like I told you, events was like the most, especially at the town hall meeting, was the most, you know, um, folks that were most vocal about. But uh, the other uh, categories, they were just as important. Um, we, we had them take that whole, if there was 20 ideas under marketing, we had to wind it down, okay? And these are the, on this chart here, you'll see number one, um, number two, three, and four, and then obviously on down. Those are the priority items, and uh, in, a, in the TIF plan, actually winds it down, takes it down even further by year, project year. Does that make sense? Uh, Your Honor. I know it's a little hard to see up here. Yes, Mr. Bush. Just a, a follow-up question to that. Um, so that they're ranked within the four categories, marketing, beautification, maintenance, and events. Uh, were they ranked collectively as well or just when they were broken down into the four categories? So, Mr. Mayor, yeah, both. They were collectively and then, and then these are the top ideas and then we asked for each of those categories to rank them as well. So, um, many of the ideas did not get cut from that town hall meetings. And a lot of them are, you know, if there was five, there was like five different variations to the same idea. So again, we kind of made it a little bit broad in the beginning as we we're prioritizing and ranking them, and then we got down to it. Each of those um, in, within the category, we actually explained in a little more detail. So in the TIF plan, it explains a little bit more. This is just a snapshot of the four main categories. Perfect. Yeah, I was at the town hall. It was great to get all of the uh, all of the residents' insight and, and their opinion and what they'd like to see in the downtown. And uh, it, it sounds like you did a great job of coalescing that feedback and putting it into these categories and ranking it. So hats off to the DDA board for putting this together. Um, one thing I, I, I want to clarify. Our next council meeting is when there will be the change of city council from the current city council to the new administration. And um, staff made a recommendation to me that perhaps we should delay the second reading until the second November meeting. 
That would be the night of the tree lighting ceremony. Whatever your honor prefers, I'll modify the motion if you um, if you'd like. Because I was hoping to get um, spoken input from the DDA board, and uh, so that may take posting. Or yeah, something? posting. Um, yeah, then uh, with the agreement of the support, I'd move that to the second meeting in November for the second reading. All right, Mr. Corbett amended the motion to move it to the second November sure. meeting. Do you, so, do you support, support please. it? Okay. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, any other dis discussion from city council on the, the subject? All right, I'll restate the motion. It was made by Councilman Corbett, seconded by Councilwoman Scott, to adopt Ordinance 2122, the restated and amended Downtown Development Authority Tax Increment Financing and Development Plan on first reading and schedule the second reading for the regular meeting of November 27th, 2017. Last chance for any other discussion, Council? All right, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. The motion carries. Thank you, everyone. All right, next is meeting open to the public. Would anyone like to address city council on any subject? Please do so now. Gloria Moore, 27368 Dartmouth. Friends of the Madison Heights area, senior citizens is having its third Tuesday meeting. November 21st, over at Wilkinson. Beverages and snacks are available and everyone is, is welcome. We're going to be working on our Christmas items, so anybody that's interested in their input on it, that'd be the perfect time for it. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Moore. Meeting open to the public, any subject? Good evening. Hi, I'm Roslyn Grafstein again. Um, I just want to say my husband and I were at the DDA Town Hall last summer, and I'm really excited to see that uh, they're taking uh, into account our ideas and suggestions from last year. I'm excited to see what we're going to do, and I really like the idea of having an open house at the second fire station. Um, we enjoyed, my family and I enjoyed the uh, pancake breakfast this past weekend in support of uh, breast cancer awareness. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Thweet, it's really nice to see you. A little nervous, yes. Welcome uh, back. My name is uh, Kenneth Thweet, T-H-W-E-A-T-T, -T, uh, known on the street as Pumpkinhead. <laughs> uh, I request that uh, the, the city council give uh, recognition for appreciation to the Methodist Church located on 11 Mile in our city. Uh, the fantastic pasture and the whole congregation, they reach out to veterans and try to help veterans as much as they can. They give us free dinners, free breakfasts, cards for foods, clothing certificates, bus passes, and counseling. And um, and they've been doing this for a long time. I don't think there's any other church in the state of Michigan that will reach out to veterans like they do. And I'm not Methodist. You don't have to be Methodist. You can be any relation. You don't have to be living as nice. But any, any, any nomination, you can be any gender. They'll take you in and work with you. And it's a great place to have that somebody's willing to spend their money from the church to give to vets. Because it's one thing we got to remember. Without a vet, they would be no United States. And think about that. And another thing I want to get into is, is the agenda. I talked to Dave Solis for quite a long time. Unfortunately, I didn't see him talk to the, I wanted him to talk to the council about the agenda, uh, not agenda, the blight, pardon me. Mm -hmm. And he, I didn't see him do it. So maybe he did, maybe he didn't, but he didn't do it in front of me. I think you people are putting some ordinances in without looking at all the puzzle. Okay, you, when you, I don't, I am, I'm, I'm not, I'm for less blight. But at the same time, I'm for keeping seniors where they're at. Our goal in Madison Nice City of Progress is to keep seniors in the home as long as possible. And if you ever get pushed out of your home, you're gonna know what it feels like. Until it happens, that's a problem with age people. They don't understand what happens. But you must keep blight out of the thing. The laws and, and, and ordinances are important. You must have them. 
but they're not burying in cement. That don't mean they can't. I give an example. I was uh, working with the Mass Valley Police Force and I had a partner. And we were going down the street and he says, we got a problem. I said, what's the problem? He said, well, a couple, older couple is sitting on a bench. I said, yeah, they're talking. <laughs> and I said, yeah, they are. And he says, well, it's past 10 o'clock, which is the ordinance for the parks, 10 o'clock. Now, by being the former deputy sheriff of Oakland County and Rolla County for Public Safety, I learned that flexibility is an important thing to have. You just can't look at the, the ordinance and the laws and say this is what must happen. And so uh, I would like to see a little bit more work in, in the, not just the blight, because I'm not for blight, but at the same time, I'm not for blight to get seniors kicked out of their homes. So they come down and, and, then, and then say, you gotta have this little mark pain, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. Well, one thing about it, we don't have the help, the volunteer help, except for Sharp, to help a senior. I mean, when you get to be a senior, I said one day you'll feel it when you get to be old, older, because you won't be able to pick up something. You won't be able to last as long. I, I went out to the yard, did my backyard, front yard, and I, I'd go about three or four hours, and that was it. It took me over five, five weeks to, to go through it. How about this, Ken? I, I know you meant to defend Dave Soltis. He's been, D Dave's been working all summer, going well, block by block, looking for ways to help people. He, he, and he's, he's picking some of the, the biggest blight issues, you know, burnt out cars, things like that. So Dave's single-handedly cleaning up our city this year. And also, I know you listen carefully to Dave. Another big issue that he reminds us of is keeping seniors in their zone. Um, and so how about this, Ken? How about I ask, and I know Dave and the rest of the council will ask for this, we'll get a report and I, uh, we'll have it published and I'll give you a copy of it to see what the city does and what the city can do for seniors. Because you're right, that policy of keeping people in their homes as long as they can, it, it's a public policy that we all should be worried about. And you know, we, we do things like the home chore program, it's, we don't have enough volunteers. But we do things. Well, you know, we'll, we'll shovel your shovel your drive. We'll cut nope. your grass, rake your leaves. Mayor, we I'm do some small things. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but nobody shoveled my walk in. We had that one snow two years ago, and I, I only had a shovel. Okay, and I did the whole thing piece by piece. And I, nobody offered. I didn't call anybody because nobody said to call. How about this? You want to give me a number to call? It's not a threat because I'm your neighbor. I know where you live. How yeah. about this? I pick you up tomorrow. And we go to the senior center and try to get you signed up. Well, I already know. No, I can't be you signed can't up. You can't get signed up. I got too much. The income is not there. I cannot get, you can't get signed up unless you have low income or disability. So that suggests you can afford it. Pardon me? That suggests you can afford it. I understand that. Yeah. No, I know the rules. But the point about it, Detroit brings people in from volunteer to out of state, and they help Detroit. I'm not knocking the sharp people because they're great. But I'm just saying, we don't have enough volunteers. I don't know where the problem is with the shark thing. They, they don't go to churches and stuff, or whatever they don't do, okay? But I think that shoving the snow, that's, like I said, that one day it was really heavy. So I had to do it by piece by piece, because I had to shovel. Most people have snow blowers. I don't have a snow blower. Okay, I do it a long way. So I'm, I'm just saying, what we need to do is look at some packages, ordinances and stuff, and, if we want to increase something, but if you're going to increase, are you thinking about adding any uh, code enforcement officers? Mm -hmm. Indeed. Huh? Are you? Yes. Well, that's good. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know you. Nobody tells me. But the point I'm saying, if you are, you're going to need to. Now, what we got on there now is pretty good people. I've talked to both of them. So they're pretty good people. And one, one woman's been on there like 16, 17 years. And... Uh, Ken, I'll give you the final word. Huh? I'll give you the final word. What's your final thought? Okay, my final thought, I want to go to one thing and I'm going to hold it tight, it is the school bond. Now, Mr. Speck, I know he lives in Oxford, so and he gets like an eight-figure salary probably. Uh, but he's saying that seniors can get a reduction on their taxes. Well, not all seniors can get a reduction on their taxes because it, it's an income level again. Okay, and the people in the apartment buildings, they're gonna be hit because of the landlord's gonna raise the rent. Now one day, not one day, two years ago, and I've been doing it ever since, I went to the school board, I went to uh, Mr. Speck, and I asked him, could you allow seniors to go to activities free? He told me no. Well, after does it, okay? But the thing about it 
is why don't you make it easy for seniors? Now I have, a, I do have a bachelor's degree in business on Walsh College, and I told him what they would get in return for the stack bar from seniors that didn't pay, they would make up for the difference. But the man, the man inside of the school, he said, well, you, you can look at the school, it'd be so nice, and it is nice. Anything new is nice. I mean, we can't deny that, most of the time, very rare. But what are you gonna do? Not eat, not buy your pills, and go by and look at the school and hope that it helps you fill your stomach or feel your pain? It's not. And as far as Mr. Speck, he's not here, unfortunately, I can't. I would be willing to debate before there's not much time for election with him any place and any time he wants. Be sure you go to the school for that. The city doesn't have oversight I over the school. That, but I'm just letting you know about the school bond. I understand what you said you can talk about anything here. Anything you want, yeah. And I am. Read the newspaper if you want, but. No, I, I am. That's what you asked. You said you can talk about anything. Well, I'm letting the school bond. It affects the city. Now, you might not think it affects the city. It does affect the city. Because if somebody buys a house, their taxes for 20 years is going to be higher than it would be some other place that did not build the school. So it does affect the city. Almost everything affects the city. But so that's all I'm going to say is, is I'm through, you know, talking. But as far as the church thing, I would like to see, they deserve, believe me, a, 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 a appreciation award. Now, we got, really, we got two people, and you know what I'm, uh, Roslyn, Roslyn, uh, the pastor, and then April, who takes care of the best. You know April, because you went to have lunch to dinner with her. So, and I know that. But anyhow, the only thing I'd like to see two of them, if it's possible, and I think they deserve it. They, they, they're helping the city with the people. And it, it, it's a great thing to have. I would like to see it, like I said, statewide, but I checked around the state, nobody has it. All of a sudden, she decided, the pastor decided to help veterans. So, it's a nice thing they, they're doing, believe me. Thank you. Meeting is still open to the public. Would anyone else like to address city council? I'd like to uh, introduce myself. I'm Tom Lewandowski. Been around Madison Heights for about three years. Bought a building on Lincoln and I bought the old uh, uh, family heating and cooling building on John R. And I would just like to say that uh, 42-year commercial painting contractor. I've had quite a bit of interaction with different cities. The city services here are outstanding. The, they come by the street, they clean, the trash picks up. I never see anybody goofing around. Uh, the building department was outstanding to work with. And uh, oh, I'm choked up because. Oh, thank you. Uh, over the years, I've represented uh, some complaints with McDonald's franchisees and cities where they tell them what color they can paint their building and not. This city is just really on the verge of breaking out. So I don't know if anybody here, you know, I don't want to throw out cities because some people may not want it to look like Berkeley or, or uh, Ferndale, but downtown Madison Heights is just waiting for people that care to clean it up and commerce and people that are in walking distance that don't even need a car to walk and do commerce on this uh, main building. But, you know, when I bought my first building, to me, it, my first impression was it was a ghost town and people, uh, it looked like, you know, a lot of stores weren't leased out. And I'll tell you, it, it doesn't even take money sometimes. I call myself the janitor of the block, just picking up 100 cigarette butts every morning. But people just pick up the paper and take pride in their own property and say hello to each other. It, it, it won't take 20 years for this city to get where it's going, but really I just want to take the time. I know people come in here and beef their, uh, uh, their grievances, but a lot of great people here just really doing a good job and uh, pretty excited to see Madison Heights future and work with people like Linda. <laughs> Thank you, Tom, very much. Would anyone else like to address city council this evening? Okay, no one, asks, no one else has asked to be recognized. 
So continuing on the agenda, we will go to item D1 under reports from the community development director. Uh, Mr. Myers, do you have a report? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Oakland County Information Technology has uh, entered into an agreement with ESRI Incorporated, uh, which is a major provider of mapping software, uh, to provide online accounts at no cost to local cities. These accounts will allow us to access their ArcGIS, or Geographic Information Systems, online uh, for mapping and data viewing. Uh, this, this program will allow the city to comprehensively update our utility maps in a manner that allows easier data sharing, uh, to share data with contractors to improve the mapping of our projects, to allow the police and fire departments to easily update and maintain our existing maps that show public safety issues like chemical hazards and, and crucial infrastructure uh, like hydrants. Uh, it will allow users to make their own maps and it re reduce dependency on quickly outdated paper maps. Uh, these online accounts typically cost $500 per user per year, meaning this agreement represents a major upgrade in our functionality at no additional cost to the city. In fact, if the city were to have to purchase uh, the 25 user licenses that we anticipate under the agreement, uh, you can do the math, the cost would be $12,500. Uh, these online uh, accounts will be most valuable for securely sharing our own utilities data with, uh, within the city uh, with contractors without uh, relying on the maps, and it allows selected users, uh, such as employees and contractors, to view our utility data, which is not directly accessible to third parties. Uh, the data that's provided through the agreement is county level data that's already available to the city, but it'll simply be provided through this new online platform with no change in the type of data available to third parties. And again, the main benefit is to increase our mapping uh, capabilities. In 2016, the city signed a similar agreement with Oakland County to provide information technology services uh, for a number of things like online payments, over-the-counter payments, local tax payments, our jury management system, uh, web publishing, support services, data center use, uh, our OakNet, which is our, our backbone that connects us, uh, internet service, and the Clemis law enforcement system. This agreement will cover those above services with no changes, but it adds the access to ArcG GIS online and high quality uh, aerial photography. Uh, so staff and I would recommend that council approve the interlocal agreement with Oakland County and authorize the manager, uh, city manager to sign on behalf of the city. And I do want to recognize tonight the uh, efforts of uh, Drew Phillips from Community Development who heads up our GIS operation. That's all your honor. Thank you, sir. What's the wish of city council? Your honor. Mr. Bliss. I move that we uh, accept the interlocal, or accept and approve the interlocal IT agreement with Oakland County for new GIS services. Thank you, is there a second? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Corbett. Support. Thank you, a motion was made by Mayor Pro Tem Bliss, seconded by Councilman Corbett, to approve the interlocal agreement with Oakland County, authorizing the city manager to sign on behalf of the city for GIS uh, services. Any discussion from city council? All right, we'll vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say no. The motion carries. All right, we can skip ahead to the minutes. Can I please have a motion regarding the minutes from October 9th? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Corbett. Sir, I move that the council approve as printed the um, minutes of the regular council meeting of October 9th. Very well, is there a second? Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Scott. Second. Thank you, motion was made by Councilman Corbett, seconded by Councilwoman Scott to adopt as printed the minutes of the regular meeting of October 9, 2017. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no, the motion carries. All right, appointments to our boards and commissioners, boards and commissions. In our informational report this week, we had a couple new applicants to boards. So is the Crime Commission a mayor's appointment? Yeah, it is. Okay, so there's an applicant, John Turchin, we all know him. Uh, would someone on council accept my appointment of John Turchin to a seat on the Crime Commission? Um, Three-year term expiring September 2020. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Corbett. It's a pleasure to uh, nominate uh, or to move to approve the mayor's appointment of John Turchin, my immediate predecessor in this seat, uh, to a term on the Crime Commission. Very well. Is there a second? 
Mr. Mayor. Mr. Scott. Second. Thank you. Motion made by Councilman Corbett, seconded by Councilwoman Scott to approve the mayor's appointment of John Turchin to a three-year term on the Crime Commission, a term expiring September 2020. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. The motion carries. We also have an applicant to fill the final alternate seat on the Arts and Cultural Advisory Board. Your Does Honor. anyone have that name? It's Vita Palazzolo. Yep, Your Honor. Mr. Bliss. Uh, I move that we appoint Vita Palazzolo to the last alternate slot on the Arts and Culture Advisory Board uh, with a term that expires 9-25-19. Thank you. Is there a second? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Getting. Second. Thank you, sir. Mayor Pro Tem Bliss made a motion seconded by Councilman Gettings to appoint Vita Palazzolo to a three-year term as an alternate on the Arts and Culture Board, term expiring September 2019. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Mr. Motion. Mayor. Motion carries. Yes, Mr. Gettings. Are we going to do Martha Kehoe and Cliff, or did I miss it? Yep, if you want to make that motion, okay. you can join them together. I make a motion to continue Cliff Oglesby and Martha Kehoe as members of the Community Development Block Grant <laughs> Review Committee. There's a third applicant. Do you want to handle that separately? No, I thought we'd, okay, and Mr. John Turchin also. Thank you, Mr. Gettings. Is there a second? Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Scott. Second. Thank you. A motion was made by Councilman Gettings, seconded by Councilwoman Scott, to appoint Cliff Oglesby, John Turchin, and Martha Kehoe to three-year terms on the Community Development Block Grant Review Committee, terms expiring November 2020. Any discussion? All right, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Uh, motion carries, all three of them are appointed. Any other applicants tonight? Your Honor. Yes, sir. Uh, I move that we appoint Curtis Kogelman to ITAC with a term ending 2-10-2019. Thanks, what's the name? Curtis Kogelman. How do you spell the last name? K-O-G-E-L-M-A-N. Is there a second? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Corbett. A motion was made by Mayor Pro Tem Bliss, seconded by Councilman Corbett to appoint Curtis Kogelman to the ITAC for uh, the vacant term expiring February 2019. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Any other appointments this evening? All right, hearing none, there's no executive session. So before I adjourn, I'd invite any closing comments from City Council, and I'd like to begin with Mr. Corbett. A few items this evening, Your Honor. Um, first of all, I wanted to say thank you to the uh, firemen uh, for the uh, pancake breakfast. I know Your Honor was uh, involved in uh, promoting that. Uh, it was a very, uh, very uh, generous act on them to work the pancake sale. The proceeds were going towards, as I recall, breast cancer research. Um, so thank you to the guys. They did a terrific job. And uh, hopefully, I've, they've indicated they may do it again in the future, and I hope the community will continue to support and, and uh, help that project along. There's an election coming up, and just a reminder to everybody to vote uh, two weeks from today, I believe it is. And uh, good luck to all the candidates. I've been there, I've been on both sides of it, and uh, winning and losing. And while winning is much more fun, um, I think that credit goes to all the people who uh, have put themselves out there. It's not an easy thing um, to put yourself out, put your ideas on the table. And uh, they get criticized and they get supported. And occasionally people forget you really are a person who hears what's being said. But um, it's good. Thank you to all of them. That's a terrific thing. It's a great field. And I wish everybody uh, the best of luck. Um, speaking of elections, the uh, next meeting uh, in three weeks from now, uh, that meeting is normally given over to ceremony. The new folks are installed. Uh, there's uh, the bustle of all the administrative duties that have to go on. 
And um, so I wanted to take a minute now before the storm hits to just say a few words for my friend at the other end of the table, Mr. Clark, who will be uh, leaving us now after a couple of years, taking a break. We're gonna give him a sabbatical time off of good behavior. Uh, 20 years on the job, most people, uh, you know, commit murders, get off sooner. But uh, I'm, I'm happy to have served with you. It was an honor. Uh, you and all of your work uh, over these years have, uh, have acted with dignity and, um, and a real respect for the people. I know some things have gotten you mad over the years, and, um, but you always kept your calm, and you were a model, I think, for all of us up here. And um, your work, it got mentioned in a different context this evening, but your volunteer work of the community uh, between the reserve fire, or, sorry, reserve police, and uh, the SHARP program, and all the other projects you've been involved with, speak highly of you as a man and, uh, and a leader. So thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased and honored to have served with you. That's all I have this evening, sir. Thank you, Mr. Bliss. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, I, I too would like to take a moment to thank Councilman Clark for his service. Um, you know, I've sat in those chairs and watched you serve, and you know, I've had the opportunity to now serve with you uh, for the past four years. And the thing that the thing that stands out to me is that you really and truly feel when a resident comes to you with an issue, and it's evident in, in how you prioritize and how quickly you you get in touch with you know the the corresponding departments and <clears throat> take care of that individual resident's need, and it's something that I strive. To, to live by as a public servant, and I know uh, many of us up here are just sometimes in awe with how passionate you are about each and every resident's needs, problems, complaints, praise, you name it. Uh, if a resident talks to you, you truly hear them, and that's, it's, it's a phenomenal thing, and it's uh, something that we're all going to have to, to chip in to fill you know, fill that vacancy that you're leaving behind, because uh, it truly is a big one. Uh, I'd also like to, to talk tonight about where I think the future is in the city. I think uh, we tonight we, we approved on first reading the DDA uh, proposal for the next 20 years, and it's a really exciting time. I, I, I think that, uh, you know, one of our business owners talked about that. I think, I, I think right now we're seeing a resurgence in Madison Heights. We've seen it over the last few years and it's been building and it's been building up and we're at this point where it's that powder keg about to explode, uh, where we're seeing all of this positive momentum and hats off to, to everybody involved in that. That only happens, you know, you talk about it takes a village, that only happens if we have dozens upon dozens of really active, passionate residents and business owners in our community who want to make a difference. Um, we saw that with, with the arts board, that uh, that's a fairly large board and it was filled by the next meeting. I mean, we, we just filled the last alternate seat on that board. So the amount of really passionate people that are serving on all of our boards and commissions and trying to amplify the things that, that we're putting forward up here and that our residents need. You know, that town hall was exciting. You know, we had 70 people in, 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 in that DDA town hall, all with all these amazing ideas. And, and to see that flush out into this, this formal plan for the next 20 years, it, it's exciting. And I'm really thrilled to have been a part of uh, queuing it up to this point and, and I can't wait to see, I, I really can't wait to see what the next few years hold uh, with all of this passion and excitement coming from everybody in all corners, every board and, and every community group in the city too. I mean, it's, it's phenomenal and it's great to be a part of it. I personally haven't seen, uh, haven't seen this much excitement and momentum uh, since since I was a, a, a young boy in the 90s and and the gazebo w was put in uh, was put in place in, in front of City Hall and, and the amount of community activity and the amount of business participation uh, we're, we're, we're seeing a, a renewal of that and, and it's and it's awesome to be a part of uh, that's it your honor 
Thank you, Mr. Gettings. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I did some math before the meeting started, and I believe Rich has attended about 500 council meetings in the last 20 years, and I believe he's missed once. And I figured it out with Linda Williams' help on the calculator, that's 998 on the percentage. <laughs> He's a great councilman, he's got character, common sense, and he's consistent, and you're gonna be very much missed, Mr. Clark. You're a great councilman. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Mr. City Attorney. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of myself, my brother Jeff, and your surrogate son, Nick Rochowski. Um, who considers you a surrogate dad to him. Um, we have enjoyed our 20 years together working uh, hard and, and through good times and bad times. And throughout much of that time, um, your late wife, Lois, was a very dear friend of all of us here. And we know you're, you're, you may be leaving council, but you're starting the next chapter in your life. And I know you're gonna be involved in uh, city-related issues, especially as it pertains to seniors. And we're gonna miss seeing you up here at the council table, but we're hopefully not gonna miss seeing you because um, with, with Ridge Clark, once you're his friend, you're always his friend. So I, my, my wish for you, Rich, is, is continued good health, and, and we wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Myers? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, not, not only do I agree with everything that's been said uh, about Rich, but one, one thing that stands out to me is that, uh, the, and this is something the public doesn't see all the time, but I, I don't think I've seen anyone put as much preparation and homework and coming prepared to meetings as, as, as Rich does. He, if he gets a call from a citizen or he has an agenda in front of him, he will research it, he'll ask questions, he'll come in. And, and I, I'm not just talking about counsel. I, I can tell you for the, the six years I, I, I had the privilege of working at public services and I would attend the senior, senior advisory board meetings for Rich with Rich. and. Uh, every time he would come in prepared to pass on information from the council, to give the boards, uh, board updates on what's going on in the community, answer questions, and, 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 and you knew the concern was always gener uh, genuine, it was heartfelt, and uh, the, Rich, you're, you're, I'm, I'm gonna miss you. Thank, thank you for your service. Mrs. Prince. Thank you, Mayor. I too had, uh, I'm going to miss my partner right next to me. You always have been a gentleman to me. I appreciate that very much. And I always say to everybody about you that you don't always talk a lot, but when you talk, it's important to listen to you. So thank you very much. And then on another note, um, the election is November 7th, city, citywide election. All our precincts will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. that day. If you need an absentee ballot, please uh, visit the city clerk's office or you can go online and make an application. Thank you. Mr. Clark, I'll let you have uh, the final word in a minute. Okay. So do you, do you mind if I pass you? It will go to Mrs. Scott. Um, I thought I could get through this, but I, as usual, I can't. Um, I too would like to thank Rich for his, I don't even want to look at you. <laughs> um, uh, I would like to thank him for everything he's done for our city council and for our citizens. Um, he made a great friend when he encouraged my husband to get involved in the SHARP program, and I appreciate that so much because it made him feel very productive. Thank you. <laughs> um, and Rich, I, I wish you good health, um, but I wanted to tell you you've always been a role model for me because you got involved in the Michigan Municipal League and you felt it was very important to know exactly what you were doing on this council. And so when you talk about preparation, you did. You helped form the elected officials academy 
and inspired so many people to become involved and make sure that they knew what they were doing. If they were on the city council, they really needed to know what they were doing. They needed to know the laws. They needed to know what would keep us out of, out of getting in legal trouble. And that's one thing that I think inspired me so much was learning about government based on your example. He was one of the first people on the board. He was the first Madison Heights resident on the board. He was one of the first people in the state of Michigan to earn his elected officials academy degree, which I then tried to inspire, and when he inspired me so much that I went on to earn mine as well. Um, he's just a role model for me and always will be, and I will try and keep your seat warm because I know and I hope you're going to be back someday. Um, but I wanted to say thank you for everything you've done. And, um, and always please remember to vote. Um, it's not only a privilege, it's a responsibility. Everybody in this room and everybody within the sound of my voice really needs to vote for those candidates that you feel are gonna do a good job. And I wanna thank all the people that have put their hats in the ring to run for city council and for mayor. Um, I think uh, that is a really responsible commitment to have to do that, to put yourself out hoping that you're gonna know all the answers to the questions, and obviously you never will, but uh, neither do any of us. <laughs> but I wanna thank you all for your participation in government and uh, for thinking that you may be good enough here to be, because you all are, and I wanna thank you again. But Rich, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Mr. Soltis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I appreciate the, the gentleman uh, for calling me out tonight. Um, and about helping the seniors in public, in front of everybody on TV with a pumpkin hat. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, uh, I, you have a point, and if I get reelected, I'll work even harder for the seniors. Um, I'd rather roast Rich, but uh, I don't think we have time for that. <laughs> I think that'd be interesting. But Rich was the one that actually uh, encouraged me to run in the first place four years ago. Um, it was an honor to serve with you, Rich. Um, you're a veteran, and I, I, I totally respect that. Um, and, and I look forward to working with you uh, again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rich, I promise you'll get the last word. Um, you know, it's going to be hard to say goodbye to you, Rich. You, you know, you've served our city for 20 years. You've, uh, you were the mayor pro tem for many of those years, um, but you, you know you you gave us an example that uh, the job of a city council person is more than just city hall; it's out there in the public, and all of your community service with uh, you know little league uh, football and baseball and scouting um, is truly a model for us. Um, you know, but but you also had a hand in. Uh, other charity groups like the Family Coalition and Youth Assistance and even Friends of Madison Heights Youth and you were the director of the Chamber of Commerce or the president of the board. Um, you really did it all and um, you know something that you, you taught me and I know some of us is you reminded us that we you know even in this uh, day of uh, technology that we still need to speak to each other face to face and that you uh, and that breeds respect for each other because it's easy to debate each other online, but you know, when you're face to face, you get to know the person, you get to know what they believe in, and I think that's really how the city had made progress, is just your personal touch on so many issues. Um, but uh, thank you so much for your service. Um, is there any further business before council, before I hand over the gavel? All right, Mr. Clark, you get the final word this evening. The oh. floor is yours, sir. <laughs> if I could have Dave give me a hand with this. They presented me, I was nominated by a couple of my neighbors, Pat and John. This is what they call the Quilt of Valor. There are a group of ladies, Stitching Sisters, Quilts of Valor. There was, there was about 10 other veterans that received all different uh, designs, and it was quite an honor 
they had a ceremony to present this to us. And I will say that anyone who would like to nominate a veteran to receive one of these, let me know. I will get to give you the card that you can uh, call the people in charge and they will set it up. All the things are done at the Colossum Police Department. They have a small banquet room there, and that's where you go receive these, this, and it was a real honor for me to receive it. I was gonna take and put it in a box with glass on it. They said, hold oh, no, on, no. We may just keep you warm. You don't <laughs> put it in a box. <laughs> I would also like to thank the people who've been with me the whole my whole 20 years, Bob Corbett, Bob Gettings, Margie, it was a real honor to work with them and all the council and the mayor now, and also the past mayors, especially Ed Swanson, who was a personal friend. And also the city employees, I feel like part of a family. And the city employees made me feel that way. And I, I enjoyed every minute of it. Like they say, I may be back. I don't know. <laughs> I still feel young enough that I can still, I still going to contribute to the city with the uh, program that they have for the seniors. And I'm going to sign on with the police department again to take care of the reserve vehicles with the uh, one that's in charge now, John Galazzo, who does a terrific job. Well, he's gonna let me have a little hand in it. So I would like to thank everybody, the citizens that kept me up here for 20 years. And the only thing I would like to say for my accomplishments, I missed one meeting in 20 years. <laughs> so it was quite an honor to do that. And I thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. The meeting is adjourned.